When you're new to the field of healthcare IT, you're full of ideas. Every problem has a solution. However, things in the real world can be different than what you expect. Here's some advice from the industry's top experts on what to do and what to avoid when starting out in health IT. I think one of the most common mistakes is the idea that it's about IT. People who are coming in to help implement really need to understand the culture of the organization and get a read on that and not try to uh, impose uh, you know, methodologies uh, where you're not here to create tension or to be um, uh, too provocative about that. You're really here to fit within the, the rhythm of an organization and the way that it takes care of people. If someone was new to healthcare IT and trying to really you know, succeed at it, I, I, the first piece of advice I'd give is to really listen. I know that sounds silly, but you know, so much about IT is listening to what people need and then figuring out how to help them and how to use your, your knowledge of technology and solutions to help them. You know, technology is changing so rapidly, healthcare is changing so rapidly. It almost becomes essential that you um, develop an attitude of sort of or an approach towards lifelong learning where you're constantly staying up on what new IT is out there, uh, staying up on the changes in healthcare because there's always something new going on and, and it will help you be sharper if you're, you're up on the latest stuff. I think the last thing I'd say is that, that IT always risks getting a little separated or uh, from the business and, and sort of staying um, maybe getting a little too focused on the technology and not on what the, the organization is trying to achieve with the technology. So I'd say the other thing is just to always think about that alignment with the, the clinical organization, the business you're supporting, um, and, and not to lose that alignment because that will also help you be really successful in the long run. I think the biggest mistake that, that people from the outside make come in um, to be a part of the project is they forget um, no matter who you are there's one common goal and the one common goal is what's in the best interest for the organization that you're being retained for and the goals of the project so you're not here to represent yourself um, primarily and you're not here to represent the company the name on your badge primarily you're here to represent the project and the common goal and if you come in here with that attitude and you come in here that you're going to be a team participant, then you and the team will be successful. I think the, the two biggest mistakes I see are one, getting focused on the feature functionality of the, uh, the software you're, or the, the application you're trying to implement instead of looking at workflow. Uh, again, you, you get focused on the features that this system or that system can do and really the focus should be on the clinician's workflow. Uh, you need to make rounds with the physicians, you need to make rounds with the nurses, you need to see what's going on in the different areas and see what's unique about that organization and, and then when you go through and you look at the feature functionality and you make the design decisions, you're doing so in context with the workflow. It's not so much, well, you know, what can we do with the system? That is important, but the bigger question is how is this going to impact patients and how is it going to impact uh, the clinician's workflow? And you can't really understand that unless you get out there and, and engage the, the, the physicians. So trying to do it in isolation and just working with analysts and looking at the functions and looking at the, the, the design guide isn't going to do it. You need to get out there with the people, with the patients, with the clinicians. I think the biggest mistake is excitement about how the system works without understanding workflow and real clinical business of, of how we take care of patients. That's the biggest thing that I see. We have spent literally hundreds of hours face-to-face -face with providers, with staff, understanding how they do things, looking at the system, and trying to make it work for them. Is it always 100% perfect? No, it's not. Sometimes they have to make some adjustments. But if you come in with a kind of a plug-and-play philosophy that, well, this is our system, this is how you have to use it, I've heard of many failures in this, in this town with that kind of philosophy. And so um, not understanding clinical workflow and also not understanding the business side of billing and compliance. Many vendors make their products so easy that it's not going to be compliant with really our regulations with how we have to sign our notes, how we have to do our documentation, how we do our orders. And so there has to be an understanding of the this global aspect of, of healthcare. The second 
uh, is also not engaging the clinicians early on. I think uh, a lot of shops, it's you know, they either don't want to impinge on the physicians and the nurses' time, or they feel like they can do it on their own, and, and they follow all the guidelines, and they build the system, and no one uses it. Uh, and that's because the physicians and the nurses didn't have input into it. So you really need to get them involved early on. There needs to be buy-in. They need to give you uh, some direction as far as things where you may be heading off track, as far as uh, impacting negatively their, their workflow or uh, causing some significant issues for patient care. Be flexible. People that aren't able to go with the flow and to adapt to change are probably going to have a different, uh, difficult time in a rapid, ever-changing environment like healthcare IT. So that's probably my top piece of advice. My next is, is probably something uh, that is said, you know, for just management in general or fields in general, listen to people more than you talk. Trying, trying to jump to a solution without really listening sometimes to what people's needs are and is, is sometimes what people want to do because they want to help solve problems, but I think really it's a benefit to really listen to what needs are before we start jumping to what the answer is. And the last thing is probably to be collaborative, to work together within the different groups like our IT environment has a lot of different specialized groups between networking and our server team and um, the applications folks. Between all those groups and then with the end user community collaborating is extremely important. Although a field like health IT involves technology, newcomers need to be aware of the bigger picture. Successful professionals will be able to adapt the technology to the needs of the organization in which they work. To do that, they need a good understanding of what the clinician's workflow entails, what the organizational goals are, and what the organizational culture and environment will support. How do they learn to do that? By listening to others, engaging in lifelong learning to stay on top of developments in healthcare and information technology, by gaining the trust and buy-in of the clinicians who will use the systems, and above all, by maintaining the flexibility to meet the challenges of the rapidly changing world of health IT.